Hi then. Right, um, today in the workshop, it's quite pikey. Um, it's that time of year where the very first job you do when you come into the workshop is get a fire burning. Unless you're one of these um, lucky people that's got central heating, I have a fire, a wood burner. The advantage of a wood burner in a workshop is obviously it keeps down your rubbish. You can get rid of all your offcuts very quickly and very simple and generate heat at the same time. Um, obviously in summer, you don't need it. So you stock up all the timbers that you cut up during the year and keep it ready for the winter to get the workshop nice and warm every day. Now then, my preferred one, which I've got here, is the uh, Clark's Boxwood. It's a big long one. It kicks out about 15 and a half kilowatts of heat when it's stoked up properly. It's got the two burner rings on top, so if you're stuck out in the middle of somewhere in a log cabin and nothing around you, it's a heat source and a cooking source, so it's useful that way. What we'll do now, since I've got to get it lit, um, is I'm just going to run you through how I do it, just in case you're not going to venture into doing one of these things and you're a little bit unsure as to what to do. It's very simple, quick, easy process. Now, the made of cast iron. You've got to be careful with cast iron. They can crack if you heat them up too quick. So the first thing you want to do is just get it warmed up. Now, there's many ways you can do that. But the easiest way is just to, when you're lighting the fire, just to let it slowly get there instead of instantly mass. Now, with a typical log burner, you only put logs in it. You only burn wood. But this one does come with a grate and an ashtray um, that you can put in. I've got them in the back shed because I never do use them. Um, that's for if you want to start burning uh, any fossil fuels, coals, uh, anything like that. Um, wood, you don't want it. You want the stuff straight onto the floor of the fire. Now typically what you're going to need with your wood is starting off with some kindling. So get some of the timbers that you can split down with the axe just to make it into small pieces. That's going to start your fire. Then you've got all your off -cut bits of wood. Logs, I like the logs. I keep them from off cut trees and stuff that I gather as I'm going around. People give me them and whatever. Fire lighting. I get these down at the local bargain centre, quid some up for a big pack of them. Nice and cheap. Um, yeah, I've got a shovel for cleaning out with. Obviously you've got to keep the ash down, although you don't need it emptied all the time. It's quite good to have a layer of ash in there. It helps protect the steel. And an axe for splitting the wood. Nice and easy. Fire lighters, as I say, and a lighter. Now then, to get to it, Nice and quickly, just um, explaining what the system is. On the front here, you've got an air circulation. This allows air to go in. You close the door, you're restricting the airflow. That'll kill your fire. That allows air in, regulated. So you can decide now to calm the fire down, to control it and let it burn at a rate you want. Instead of it all just burning away quick, you get boiling up for an hour and freeze for the rest of the day. At the back, we have another lever here which regulates the flue as it's been sucked up the chimney if that is fully open like that then all your heat's going up the chimney you have a nice warm chimney but your workshop will stay cold so once it gets going you need to regulate that up enough so the smoke's not coming back into the workshop but it's not drawing it up so quick uh, leaving the door open with that up will give lots of heat out to you but it will burn quite quick so you can close the door, wind this in, not completely, but a little bit. That will slow it right down and be very, very long burning. It won't be as roaring hot, but it controls your heat. Now on top I have these two. These are thermal fans. What they're for is blowing the heat that rises from here over there. Because it's a long workshop, I don't want just this bit warm. I want some heat over there. That's what these do. This one is powered by the rising heat. As it comes up, it will spin this with the heat. And in there is a little motor dynamo. It's been fired to be a generator. Um, that generates electric and it eventually will spin this. When that spins, it's pushing the heat away from us. So I've got two of them sitting at the optimal hot point of the fire at the back there. So when it gets hot, I'll know because they'll be spinning like buggery. First thing we do, we get ourselves some kindling. Now it's a nice quick process. We just grab a couple of bits of kindling. We need space underneath to let air flow, just initially. 
So I put two bits down like that, and it's just sanding us. Then we'll put some cross members in. One, two, three. Just three, just for now. Keep these towards the front. Just three, just for now, yes you know. Then, a couple of chunks of firelighter. Don't need too much. And put these in at the front. By the wood. You don't want them further back because it will draw backwards. You want it at the front, like so. Can I shove on some more of this wood? Oops, I didn't fall off on there. Some more wood that way. Some more wood that way. And we're up there. Let's close that up there. I thought the smoke coming in then. Right. A few pieces like this to get it all nice and started. Then we can put something a little bigger on. Nothing too much for now. We want to warm the chimney up first. Okay, so we've got that. Now you can close this and open that fully out to get the drawer going. Or, like I do, I just leave it open. Now the only thing to watch for, open fires. Workshop's got lots of dust, lots of wood, etc. around it. You've got to make sure you protect it. I've got this metal plate here, which deflects the heat from any wood there. It doesn't get hot. Not too hot. And for sparks, which you get a lot, I have a conventional fire guard. I just stand that there, any sparks coming out can't get past. But my floor, the tiles underneath for the fire are sound. And beyond that, I've got quartz vinyl, which is pretty hard wearing, doesn't burn very easy at all. Right now we just leave that, don't need this in front yet, we just leave that now to stalk itself up. Once it gets to a reasonable level, then we can start getting some more. I like to leave it until these are spinning. When these are spinning, I know the fire is hot. So we'll just leave that for a bit now, close this door and let it suck up. Okay, it's been a few minutes now, uh, let's open up and see how we're doing. Yeah, that seems to be cooking quite nicely. Now we're all at the front here. So what we'll do next is it's sparking out straight away already. Now we'll just spread it out a little bit, like this, and then start piling on some bigger stuff. I'm not putting any logs on yet. I like to get the stove good and hot first before I put logs on. Now put that log there on, close the door again, and it's gonna really cook up and get nice and hot. Next time we come back to it, we'll be ready for the logs. Leave all the settings as they are. Well, you can see now the fans are both going full pelt there, so obviously we've got a lot of heat around this area now, so that's blowing it out. Um, but it's not enough yet, so at this point, I open the door. It's good and cooking there, but not enough to regulate that one yet. So I'll carry on leaving it, but I'll leave the door open and put the fire guard in front. That'll let a lot more heat come out. Um, the regulator at the back, I will turn that up later on, once I get a little bit more and I get on to putting the logs on. Right, well, the mum is already warming up quite nicely, um, and that is burnt down as much as I need it to, so I'm going to come back and uh, put some logs on. Moving this away with the clamp, because it does get very hot, very close to it. Um, now you can see what I've got here, it's all burnt down, but don't let it all drift to the back. If you do, then you will have a distant flame. You need to try and keep this well, not out of the fire, but as close to the front of it as you can without it coming out. Like so, that would be perfect. Now I'm going to put some logs on. And then I'm going to close it and let it cook some more, just to burn these logs and get them fired up nicely. Now close it up and leave it five or ten minutes for that to really start to boost up. Then I'm going to regulate everything and just let it simmer. But I'm going to leave the door open because it's a nice feeling. It's a chilly day and it's a nice feeling. So it will burn a bit quicker than what 
it has to do. I could make it short, but it's nice to have that feeling of it. Okay, I think that's cooked enough now. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's doing a lovely job. Right, now time to regulate it. And I remember this thing will be very hot now. So I'm using the stove tool. This is a tool used for lifting this up. These are so you can get access for putting pans on. You can shove your frying pan on there and a nice fry up if you want. Or you can just shove your kettle on top without but use these tools for picking them up with you. It's very hot. And I have this tool which helps me pick up these if I should need to move them. When not. And there we have it. The conclusion. We have now a nice roaring log fire. And look at it. Isn't that a fire to be proud of? Not just the workshop, I'd say most homes would be proud of that. Nice log burning fire and stacks more to go on. Right, now I'm just going to leave the door open and let it keep me warm. Okay, right, well, thanks for watching again and have a nice warm winter. Bye for now.